Welcome back to Prophecy Unfolding, where prophecy is truly unfolding. This is just an update because I've been getting emails and messages on what has been happening with TD Jakes. You know, I believe as prophecy has been unfolding over the kind of the last few decades, um, you know, scripture tells us plainly some of the signs that we should should be looking for. And you know, we've seen more and more. You know, judgment starts in the house of God, and anything that is hidden um, in the darkness will be exposed. But what I want to do is to show you exactly what's going on um, at the moment with T.D. Jakes, but also to, I feel it's important to give a, a bit, little bit of an overview on where I'm coming from. You need to watch them full, just to get the full context of this, because I believe when we're doing this and we're talking about, you know, believers or you know preachers we have to give the full context but we'll smash the like button as well so that's this may come across someone who needs to hear this and um, we'll have a listen to what's been happening with him uh first and i'll see you on the other side first at 5 30 however he is an internationally known preacher based here in dallas this morning during a 9 a.m sunday service bishop td jakes of the potter's house suffered a health incident during a morning prayer the whole thing caught on camera as that morning service was being streamed around the world. Olivia Leach joining us now outside the Potter's House in Dallas with more on the mega church pastor. Every Sunday, thousands of parishioners come here to the Potter's House in Dallas for their Sunday service. This is where Bishop T.D. Jake suffered that medical incident while on stage. Now the video of the incident is going viral. In the video that's now gone viral, you can see Bishop Jakes finished his Sunday sermon and then got quiet, seemed to shake. The crowd reacting before several people rushed on stage to come to his aid. World-renowned Dallas pastor T.D. Jakes is named in a federal lawsuit against musician Sean Diddy Combs. It's filed by a producer that worked with Combs. It discusses how the singer planned to leverage his relationship with the bishop to soften the impact on his public image of Casey Ventura's lawsuit. Ventura is a former girlfriend of Combs who filed her own lawsuit in November alleging abuse, violence, and sex trafficking. Meanwhile, Combs' lawyer is criticizing the raids at two of the hip-hop moguls' homes in a federal sex trafficking investigation. He called them an unprecedented ambush. It comes as we're getting a new look inside Combs' L.A. house after the search by federal agents. It was a pleasure. I still love to preach. I ain't tired of preaching. I miss you. I miss you. Have you ever gone to a hospital to visit somebody and you thought you was going to encourage them and they encourage you? That's what preaching is like. You think you're giving out something, but you're getting back more than you gave. Now, Lord, let the words in my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength, my redeemer, let them go in peace. On the Potter's House Facebook page, parishioners and followers around the world sent prayers for Bishop Jake's quick recovery. In a statement posted online, the Potter's House said Bishop T.D. Jake's experienced a slight health incident and received immediate medical attention. They thanked the community for the outpouring of love, prayers and support and said that Bishop Jake's is stable and under the care of medical professionals. The Potter's House did not share if T.D. Jakes was hospitalized following the incident or what may have led up to the incident. Carter Evans has details about what the feds have uncovered so far. Guns, cell phones, and other electronics are among the items taken from the homes of music mogul Sean Diddy Combs, 
according to a source familiar with the search warrant performed by federal agents at his properties in Los Angeles and Miami. TMZ says this video shows the aftermath of the raid inside Combs's L.A. mansion. Drawers empty, documents scattered, and safes open and searched. Hours after the raid started, Combs was seen walking around the Miami Opelika Airport, according to TMZ, which also obtained this video. Later, at the same airport, authorities arrested Combs' associate, Brendan Paul, and charged him with drug possession. In a civil suit filed against Combs by former music producer Rodney Jones, Paul was accused of being a drug and gun mule who allegedly aided Combs in sex trafficking. Yesterday, Diddy's lawyer called the law enforcement action nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. Could this federal investigation have come out of these private lawsuits? Oh, absolutely. If it involves trafficking or drugs or weapons, or other illegal behavior. Lori Levinson is a former federal prosecutor. They've decided this is worth a lot of resources across the country. So once they've done these searches, they have evidence to follow up on. And if they've got it, they'll move on it. We still hear you're rocking with the best. Even though Combs has not been publicly named as a target of the investigation, he says he's now prepared to fight to clear his name. Carter Evans, CBS News, Los Angeles. Bishop T.D. Jakes is recovering tonight after experiencing a, quote, slight health incident after delivering a sermon at the Potter's house today. The church said in a statement Jakes received immediate medical attention after he delivered an hour-long message this morning. Jakes believes he got overheated toward the end of his sermon. His church said he is in stable condition and under the care of medical professionals. The entire Potter's House family is grateful for the outpouring of love, prayers, and support for the community, the statement went on to say. Do you have any critique of the megachurch as such? In other words, the fact that it is a megachurch, not yours in particular, but the megachurch. You know, I think it's a very interesting conversation. First of all, uh, according to uh, Barnes, anything over 2,000 members in the megachurch, right. none of them are alike. The notion, people who stand outside of us categorize us as, as if we are monolithic. Yeah. They're, 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 none of them are alike at all, in any way. And so you cannot take a cookie cutter model and say megachurches are this or that or the other. There wouldn't be a megachurch if there weren't mega people coming into them. Yeah. Mega churches, are, I started pastoring a storefront. I'm the same guy that pastored 50 people on Easter Sunday if you counted pregnant people and dead folks. Okay? <laughs> I didn't turn into some kind of creature when they became 5,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can show you my tapes in and my tapes now. The yeah. message is still the same. The people control the size of the church, not the person up but front. But the practice is a little different, right? I mean, obviously, you ain't doing everybody's wedding, and you shouldn't be. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. no. You, the, the way you manage the church has to change, yeah. but the message remains the same. Yeah. And if 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 you are not drunken on the need to be a celebrity. Well, that, but that's part of the problem. Some would argue that if you have a church with 35,000 people, even if you don't want to be, mm -hmm. you're a celebrity. If you got NFL players and actresses and models in the front row or the 10th row because they come in late, you know, they're going to be... Yeah, you know, it's going to produce a certain uh, level oh, of celebrity. On. I was in a, in a small church too long to buy into that. I've seen people idolize their pastor and they didn't have but 50 members and he's got a Rolls Royce sitting in front of the church bigger than the entire church. The car is bigger than the whole church. Yeah. If people are going to idolize you and misappropriate their faith toward a human being, they're going to do it. If it's not the pastor, they're going to idolize the man. Yeah. They're going to idolize whoever they want to idolize. As we preach the word to people, hopefully yeah. they grow out of that to understand maturity. Yeah. And there are pastors whose ego demands that type of adulation. I, I personally think I'm too gifted to have to get it from that stream. I could get it. How do you from resist anywhere. that? How do you resist that? That that temptation? Because it's a human temptation. You know, it's it's actually the part of ministry that I hate. Really? I really hate it because from the inside out, I see myself as quite normal, and the pressure to live up to all of your expectations. It frustrates me. Yeah. I, I like to pick out my own chicken wings. <laughs> you know, that's why I describe myself as a very ordinary kind of guy. So I don't need that to make me feel good about myself. I liked myself before you knew me. Yeah. See, yeah. I didn't need you to know me to like me. I like me alone. That's a rare thing. Yeah, so I don't really need all of that, and I kind of uh, shy away from it. I don't like to go out in crowds and be uh, uh, accosted by masses of people and signing autographs. I can handle it but I don't need it. Hmm. I like simple friends in simple places, eating simple food, doing simple things, because for me, my mother from Alabama, my father from Mississippi, raised in the country and in the hills of West Virginia, that's life to me. 
Now, when it comes to these type of videos, I am very, very careful with the words I say and I choose to use. Um, I personally can say that I followed T.D. Jakes a long time ago. I believe at the start of his ministry, he was absolutely on the ball. But somewhere along the line, things can go wrong. You know, scripture tells us that we cannot be friends in the world or friends of the world because to be a friend of the world is to be an enemy of God. Now that doesn't mean to be with people in the world and talk and conversate, but if we do the things that they do and participate in the things that they do, we are not setting ourselves aside and we are open to all types of things that could happen. We all know the whole thing of P. Diddy and I believe there's going to be huge exposure over the next 12 months, not just obviously with, with the allegations around T.D. Jakes, but with others. And God is going to expose what needs to be exposed. Us as believers need to be ready for this to tell people that yes, humans can fail. This is not a representation of Christ when they do this. Christ represents himself and we as humans and as, as frail beings have to try our best to set ourselves apart and not be like the world. And I believe as we get closer and closer to the return of Christ, we're gonna see more and more of this. People need to stay away from leaning on humans as their ultimate and use scripture. There's many people online who are amazing teachers and preachers um, without asking the world of you. That's who we should be going to. Scripture is our main authority. That's all I wanted to share on this. Um, praying for their family and whatever needs to be done there, whatever God has to do, let's pray that his plan comes to fruition um, and what needs to happen there. God's always in control and keep the faith.